Hey guys, today on the what? Look at this one. Eighteenth of o no. Eighteenth of October, two thousand sixteen. This will be my first round of mods. They're not really mods. They're just stuff that. I wanted to replace the interior bits. I'm um, in an attempt to freshen up the engine bay as well. I have got spark plugs and spark leads which I already replaced. They're pretty easy stuff to do so I won't really show how I did it. I mean they're pretty straightforward. Um, it did not fix my problematic idle but it did feel a lot stronger when I cranked the engine so that's a good news anyway. Uh, what else do I have? We have the H3 lights, I bought H4 before it was wrong because these headlights takes the H3 lights so got these to change, they're really dim so this will be good um, relocating my gauge got some foam tape to get rid of some rattles and this is a cool part sunny holders this will replace the ashtray, um, which I have no use for. Let's start with the center console. I'm gonna take all this is off. Um, putting that down to here, this cubby holder is gone. It's gonna be replaced with this. And I get my bed back. All right, from watching videos of other people doing this online, doesn't seem so hard. Seems like all you need are some prying tools and some small screwdrivers. Seems like there's a lot of these screws around the side of the whole setup console. You'd have to take off the handbrake cover, um, the shifter, and this thing comes out as well, and then basically this whole thing comes up. All right, so taking some of the screws out, there's two at the front, there's one at the handbrake, plastic, ridiculously looking cover thing. There's also two in the, what are they called, armrest glove box thing. Um, the rest I think is in the ashtray. The ashtray is really easy to take out. Just pull it out. I think if you have a, a cup holder, it's the same thing as well. So there's a screw here, and you're gonna take off the key knob. And it's out. You should just actually literally pull out after that. There's a few cables underneath there with electronics, so just make sure to unplug that and know where it belongs afterwards. Alright, finally got it out. That was a really stubborn clip. Uh, cable harness thing. Patience, and you will get it out. Underneath the center console is these heat installations. It's kind of cool pulling it apart because I get to see the inside of the car and the original color. I'll show you what this car used to be. I don't know, is that a Mariner or a Laguna Blue? Next thing is that we have to take these guys out, the whole tombstone. There's a screw there that I've already taken out from down the bottom. There's only two more screws which are behind these vents. So we're just going to use a prying tool and I should be able to get out quite easily. The vents off and the screws are at the top. See these? That's the screws. Now, now one of the vents are quite easy because it had the pod in it, the, the, the gauge pod in it. So the gauge just kind of screwed out and then these things just popped out. I think missing a few clips and it was double taped on. The other one was a little bit tricky because, see, to be able to get this thing out, you have to take it out in one whole unit, including the root. Yeah. Prying tools didn't work. So, I found myself a little hook. So, I kind of just hooked it in there and fish it out. Um, hold everything together and then kind of pull it all out and it came out pretty easily. So, get the screws out, get the tombstone out and we're good to go. Alright, so just put it back all together. Um, putting it back is kind of the same, just in reverse. It was really easy. One thing though, make sure that you, next time for me as well anyway, know where each screw goes in or have a, I don't know, just chuck it all into one bin and then 
didn't know which screw was which, just had to test around. Anyway, looks really good. And I'm really liking the fact that I get my own vent again. So I got the vent again. And the gauge is here now. It is a little bit harder to read or anything past here. But the thing is, my car doesn't go anywhere past here. So it's still fine. It's not sitting as flush as I liked at the bottom of the plate there. Um, but it does look nicer than being at the top. Uh, with the space kind of gone, the cubby holder gone, that, that's my main space to put my phone, my wallet, anything that I need immediate kind of thing. Um, with that space gone, and I think I can only put my phone there really, um, I needed another storage space. So I replaced the ashtray now with the OEM Sunny holder, which is a really cool thing, but it was really hard to find. Finally found one in Yahoo auctions. Um, Steve found it actually, uh, and he linked it to me, and then I used Jesse Streeter, and he brought it here. It was really quick. It's a really cool nifty little storage space for the MX-5 instead of the really useless cup holder or the ashtray You get the flip up and you get more storage Flip down and it looks clean. All right now the inside's done um, Time for these headlights gonna change the bulbs to the H3 Philips crystal 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 clear 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 crystal I've taken these off before um, They're not really very well made these active RS headlights you got these two screws, but this screw, it's like that close to the body, so you're kind of almost scratching it. And then same as it's on the other side. So those screws actually take the cowl or the cover of the headlight off. And the one that actually covers the top of the headlight, there's four more screws inside. And then you take that off to kind of get a clear reach into the headlight itself. Uh, taking the cowl off and taking these screws out for the top cover the problem again with a low profile headlight I can't get to that one again so I kind of just can put that up like so the other thing now is that there's a bolt under here that I gotta take out this pops off and then there's two screws here that takes the whole headlight out and you can access the bolt from there that's the front part of the headlights. For the H3 bulbs, unlike the H4, you just gotta unclip these. And they basically pop out. And then this is the actual bulb with the wire that goes straight to the connector. You just gotta pop that out too and then replace a new one. So these are the bulbs that popped out. They're pretty shitty. These are the ones that are going in. The Philips Crystal Visions. Make sure to never touch the front, so. Let's pop these in. All right, fitted one in. Before I put the cowl back in, I do want to test if it works. So let's just see, turn it on, see the difference as well, and then we'll do the other side. Well, it's done. Whew. It was a good day's work. All done, all good, all success. I'm just gonna wait till it's dark outside and test the lights and go for a drive. So, for now, it's gonna take a break. All right, it's night time. Um, it's dark enough to test out the lights. I'm actually just waiting for NK, he's coming by. We're gonna meet some of the boys down at Rouse Hill and we're gonna drive down to Windsor, just have a bit of a cruise top down enjoy the summer night, spring night, spring night. Um, and I can also test out what it's like to have the gauge at the bottom instead. Where is this guy? So slow. That's because his MX-5 is not supercharged. Rouse Hill now, um, and Steve's here too. Hello. He actually just done something different to his car. He redid the whole interior leather, and it looking really nice. Makes our cars look like a POS. So plush. So plush. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, what a beast! Oh, what a beast! Look at this big black beast. BBC. So the lights work. They're not as bright as I thought it would be and it's kind of staggered. Left one is a bit higher than the right. I have no idea how that happened. Um, but at least they're better than the one before. It's gonna go for a drive, except it's not very easy to film and drive at the same time. So I won't do it. I haven't been doing it, by the way. So I thought that going down to Windsor, having a nice cruisy kind of drive, not twisties or anything would be a good idea, except it smells like, it smells like cow sh honestly. Top down does not help. But car feels good, feels really good. Uh, still a little bit of things to kind of uh, iron out, still a few kinks to iron out, but feels a lot stronger and feels a lot smoother than before, so I, the spark plugs and the leads definitely work, guys. So somehow we went past Windsor and went on Party Road and just kept going. Got really cold at one point. Not sure how. Um, but yeah, kind of stopped on the side where this truck stop is. There's a few truckies here. Hope we don't get killed. Um, just kind of don't know how far we want to go. I think we're going to go turn back now and head back home. But it was really nice. Got really, really cold, but it was a really nice drive. Um, big big moon just in front of you a really massive yellow moon in front of you stars all above you it's a really nice drive what a way to live i am wearing a jacket but it's actually not that cold so yeah let's turn back around <laughs> 